With a little over two months to go until the start of the regular season, a good amount of fans are experiencing true off-season blues. With the draft, free agency, and summer league now behind us, there isn't much to look forward to in the NBA rather than opening night October 16th. But there are a handful of players that are having an even worse offseason than any of us, as they're used to having been signed to a new deal by this point in the league calendar, but have yet to be added to a team for the 2018-19 season. Most of these players are getting up there in age by NBA standards, and a few of them you might even have forgotten that they're still in the league, but they've each expressed that they want to return for another season, but have yet to find a team willing to offer them a contract which when combined with their age, makes me wonder if this summer is the end of their NBA careers. One quick note, this is a video I tried to put out last week but was taken down pretty quickly due to some copyright issues, so I re-edited it without NBA video and added and subtracted some entries. So even if you were one of those people that got a chance to see the original before it was blocked, there are some guys on here that weren't on the first list. Having said that, let's go ahead and get started. Number one, Richard Jefferson. The first of two former Arizona Wildcats on this list, I wouldn't blame you if you thought that Jefferson had already ended his NBA career. After all, he went back and forth on his retirement decision after winning his first NBA championship in 2016 with the Cavs before deciding to return to the team after all, and was then traded to and waived by the Hawks before landing with the Denver Nuggets to finish out last season. With that deal now expired, Jefferson has said publicly he has one more season of basketball left in him but is still looking for the opportunity to sign with an NBA team. He is at least realistic about his role at this point in his career, acknowledging that a large part of his value now lies in his ability to be a positive force in the locker room and mentor the young players on the roster. It isn't out of the question to think he could find himself on an NBA team this year, so long as he finds the right situation. He did turn 38 years old this summer, but can still provide solid contributions in spurts. His signing would likely be similar to Vince Carter's with the Hawks a few weeks ago, an aging vet with a strong locker room presence on a team without high expectations for this coming season, to try and be the glue that holds the team together. If that kind of scenario doesn't develop before the season starts, I could see him finding a deal in the middle of the year with a team lacking in wing depth and or going through some injury issues on the perimeter. The Houston Rockets, for example, lost some valuable wings this offseason and replaced them with Carmelo Anthony, but should they be hit with the injury bug, they might just give Jefferson a call for one last hurrah in the league. But in all honesty, the most likely option here is probably that he has played his last game in an NBA uniform. He just doesn't have the same kind of athleticism or defensive ability that teams look for on the wing these days, and hasn't shown the shooting ability to make up for it either. Barring an injury-riddled team or a Vince Carter-like signing, Richard Jefferson's NBA career will probably end this summer. Number 2. David West After chasing an elusive championship ring for the past few years, a decision marked by turning down a significant player option to stay with the Pacers while signing a bargain-level deal with the Spurs in the summer of 2015, David West is finally able to call himself an NBA champion after winning the 2017 and 2018 title as a member of the Warriors. It was clear that it was very important to the two-time All-Star out of Garner, North Carolina, which is about 15 minutes from where I grew up, by the way, to add NBA champion to his resume before his career was over. The problem for him is he might not be adding any more accolades to that resume at the NBA level, at least. He reportedly won't be rejoining the Warriors next year, and his options on the free agency market are limited. There are a handful of younger teams with high aspirations for next season that could be interested in his services, like the Sixers for example, but even then that's a bit of a stretch. At his peak, he was a highly efficient scoring forward and rebounder that provided great toughness and energy to the team, but as with any player, he has regressed significantly with age. He hasn't cracked 20 minutes or 10 points per game in a single season since he left Indiana and will turn 38 years old later this month. He just doesn't provide the same kind of quickness that teams are looking for in front court players these days at this point in his career. And although he does still provide plenty of offensive skill as a scorer and passer, his defensive and athletic deficiencies are getting more and more difficult to overlook with each season. It isn't impossible for him to find a team for next year still, but as of right now, things don't seem to be looking great for him. Number three, Jamal Crawford. Next up is a guy that is certainly a fan favorite, but that might have caused his reputation to be outpaced a bit by his actual play on the court in recent seasons, Jamal Crawford. 
He's never been known as an efficient scorer nor a great defender, but the signs of slowing down have been pretty apparent recently. His points per game average has decreased each of the last four seasons, and his three-point percentage has only occasionally been above the league average recently. Questionable shot selection has always been something that was a part of the deal with Crawford, with the trade-off being that he can heat up in a hurry and provide a jolt of offense off the bench, but it seems as though this might be the offseason in which his inefficiency finally catches up to the three-time Sixth Man of the Year award winner. He had a solid year last season with the Timberwolves, despite his lowest minutes per game average of his career since his rookie season. But with things not looking so great in Minnesota between the players and the coaching staff and the front office, it's been made clear that Crawford won't return to the team next season. But even with that said, it's pretty shocking to see him without a deal this late in the offseason. Guys that can still score the ball like him are supposed to be able to hang on well into their late 30s and move on from the game when they choose to. But this may just be another way the NBA is evolving in the modern era from how it used to be. Just like with most, if not all of the guys on this list, versatility and flexibility are now the name of the game. And although specialists do still exist, they aren't nearly as big a part of NBA rosters as they used to be. There were some rumblings early on in free agency that he was getting some interest from Golden State about a deal, but nothing ever materialized and with the calendar now having turned to August, the likelihood of him signing a deal before the start of the season is slim to none. Number four, Jason Terry. The other former Arizona Wildcat on this list, Jason Terry has no intention of ending his NBA career just yet. He's one of the oldest players left in the league as he'll be 41 years old next month, but has made it clear that he intends on playing 20 seasons in the league, ideally with the team he played with last season, the Milwaukee Bucks. He has apparently had conversations with the organization and they understand his desire to return for this coming season, but as of this video, no official deal has been signed yet. He only appeared in 51 games for the team last season, the second lowest number of his career. And even though he wants to play for the Bucks once again, that doesn't necessarily mean that they share the same desire under new head coach Mike Budenholzer. He's a strong veteran presence and will likely shoot better from three if fully healthy than he did this past season. But that seems unlikely for a player as old by NBA standards as Terry. In all likelihood, the team will probably end up bringing him back anyway, just for his locker room presence and playoff experience alone. But if they don't in favor of saving the roster spot for a younger player that could develop into something down the line, you really couldn't fault them for that decision. In the end, I really have no clue if this summer is the end of Jason Terry's NBA career. And for his sake, I hope it isn't. But it is at the very least a real possibility that he has played his last game in an NBA uniform. Number five, Joe Johnson. Last on the list is seven-time All-Star and one-time All-NBA selection, Joe Johnson. Another guy that has adopted a bit of a journeyman style in recent years, he's played for four different teams since his buyout from the Nets in 2016, when you include Brooklyn. He had some nice moments in Miami after signing with them post-buyout and parlayed that into a sweet deal with the Utah Jazz in the summer of 2016, considering he was 35 years old at the time. He rewarded the team by being one of the most consistent performers in the 2017 postseason, helping the team defeat the LA Clippers in a thrilling seven-game series to advance in the playoffs for the first time since 2010. Midway through last season, however, he was traded to and waived by the Kings after contributing his worst season to date while struggling through a wrist injury early in the season. He did manage to find his way onto the Rockets roster and nearly made the first NBA Finals appearance of his career but they ultimately fell to the Warriors in seven games, with Johnson observing most of the series from the bench. Now at 37 years old and with some rumors swirling around that he requested to be traded from the Jazz and was unhappy there, a red flag that although small, really isn't something he can afford at this point, things may be winding down for the NBA career of Joe Johnson. He does still have value as a scorer and shot over 40% from three, in the two most recent seasons in which he's been fully healthy, but this could be an issue more of a degrading body due to injuries than a degrading skill set. He was never known as exceptionally quick or focused on defense in his time in Brooklyn, despite good size for a wing. And unless he's willing to take on a much smaller offensive role and contribute in other ways, something that his last moments in Utah don't seem to indicate, then he might find himself still looking for a contract well into the regular season. And there you have it, five NBA free agents whose careers might be over this summer. Once again, this was a re-edit of a previous video, so if it seemed a bit familiar, then that would be why, but I hope you enjoyed it all the same. 
My name is Tucker. This has been Sporting Logically. If you missed any of my previous Monday, Wednesday, Friday videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.